Hey everyone, Rodev here, and in today's video we're going to be going over the sound object in Roblox Studio, and we're going to be covering everything about it, including the properties, the events, and the methods of the sound object. So by the end of this video, you guys will know everything you need to know about the sound object and how it works in Roblox. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is inserting a sound into a uh, sound service over here. I'm going to click plus, and I'm going to search for a sound. I know you guys can't see this window right now, but basically just type sound into the box and then click on the first one it should look like just like this um... so the first thing i want to go over is how sounds work if it's placed in something like sound service it's going to play for everyone at the same volume everywhere however if you place it under a part in workspace it'll play at that part so if i go to the properties and i adjust something like uh... roll off max distance that'll basically change the distance that it can be heard from for example, um, I'm just going to be changing my walk speed real quick. So character walk speed, let's make that 100. And I will set the sound to something. So let's go to the toolbox and find something. Um, you can just go to audio and let's just use the first one that comes up and hit insert. I'm going to move it under the part and uh, we're going to change it to playing. So this property makes it playing uh, when the game starts. We'll go over that later though when we go over properties. So now if I pl uh, press play. When I enter the game, not sure if you guys can hear it, but it's definitely there. And if I go over here, I can't hear it. It gets louder and louder as I get closer to the part, and quieter and quieter as I go away. So that's what happens when you parent parts to, uh, or you parent sounds to parts in the workspace. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I had to explain there. If parts are in sound service, however, or something else like that, I recommend sound service though. It will be heard at the same volume everywhere. So that's basically, uh, that's basically how sounds uh, differ from being placed in the workspace and sound service. The next thing I want to go over is actually the uh, properties, so let's get started. So for this, we're going to have to insert a sound into sound service. And I'm actually going to be using a sound from here just so that we have uh, you know something to listen to. Alright guys, so now the audio is in. I'm just going to rename it to uh, crickets. I'm not sure if... Yeah, I'm just going to rename it to, uh, to crickets and we can get started. So. The first property we're going to be looking at is archivable. This is basically uh, under everything, and basically, um, it's not so important. It determines whether or not an instance can be saved when the game closes, or the game, you know, attempts to save it. Um, not really important. Don't worry about that. This is the class name of the sound object. This is not changeable. It's basically telling the game that this is a sound. Um, the next thing is is loaded. Um, these three gray ones over here are actually only readable. You cannot actually change them. Um, they're just to tell you uh, info about the sound. So is loaded tells you if the sound is loaded or not. It's a good thing to check before you actually play the sound. Is paused will tell you if the sound is paused or not. Is playing will tell you if the sound is playing or not. And the next thing we have here is looped. Um, for background music, you obviously want to have this on. This basically just chooses whether when you uh, hit play it, when you hit play and the sound reaches the end, whether it goes back to the start and plays or it goes back to the start and stops. So loop. That's pretty self-explanatory. Name, parent, uh, this is within every single object in the explorer. The name, obviously the name, and the parent is what it's parented to, so sound service right now. Um, real quick, in, in case you guys don't understand, if I place it here, it's parented to starter player scripts. Here, it's parented to starter player. Um, the next thing we have here is playback, uh, playback loudness. Obviously, you can't change it. And this is not the volume. The volume will go over later. But this is basically just telling, uh, again, it's only readable, and it's for telling people how loud the sound is actually playing. According to Roblox, it's a number between 0 and 1000 in indicating how loud the sound is currently playing back. The next thing we have is playback uh, speed. And the playback speed is actually, according to Roblox, um, basically just determines the speed at which the sound will play. With higher, values, uh, with higher volumes, it will cause it to play faster and at a higher pitch. So this will change how the sound actually sounds. The next thing we have here is um, after playback speed is playing, so basically this will um, well, this will play the sound, this will stop the sound from playing. It's basically a different way uh, to play the sound compared to using the methods we'll talk about later in scripts. But if you, wanna, if you want a sound to be playing and looped without any scripts from when the game starts to whenever the player leaves, you want to check looped and check playing. That's how we did it in my simulator series. The next thing we have is roll off max distance. I'm actually going to read the Roblox definition for this. This is uh, the maximum distance in studs a client's listener 
can be from the sound's origin and still hear it. So again, as we were in the beginning of the video going far away and coming back closer towards the part, this is basically um, how many studs away the person can still hear it from. The roll-off minimum distance is the minimum distance um, it'll begin to, you know, decrease. So say I set this to 100, from 0 to 100 it will not change volume, but after 100 studs, the farther I go away, it will lose volume. The next thing we have here is roll-off mode. Um, I've actually never used this, so I'm going to read what it is. It controls, um, it controls how the volume of a sound behaves as the distance between the sound and the listener changes. So as you go away, this will basically change how it fades away. Um, not, too uh, not too important, you can leave it as inverse. The next thing you have here is the sound group. Um, we're, not, we're actually not going to talk about sound groups this video, but basically sound groups is, well, I'm actually going to show you guys real quick. Um, I can just insert a sound group and I can place a lot of sounds in here and uh, in quick definition I can just change the volume of all of them at once. So that's basically what a sound group is. The next thing we have is the sounds ID. So this is actually the most important one in my opinion. This is the actual ID of the sound effect that it's playing. Under that you have preview so you know what you're actually listening to. Or uh, yeah you can just test it out before you start the game. The next we have is time length. This is again readable, it's not changeable. This will tell you how long the sound is in seconds. Um, the next thing we have here is time position. This will tell you where we are, so I play this. Um, it's not changing right now, but basically, if it's here and say this is like 15 seconds in, this will be 15. The next thing we have is uh, volume, so that's basically what I was talking about earlier, the volume of the sound. Um, it can be between 0 and 10, it defaults to 0 0.5. I like 1, I use that for most of my sounds in games. Um, the next one we have is actually a behavior. It's called play on remove and in short terms, um, when I delete the sound using the script, it will play the sound. Um, this basically makes a quick way to you know clean up the sound and also have it removed. Um, the next thing we're going to be going over are the events. So we're done properties and let's go over events. For this I'm going to actually be inserting a local script. And uh, we're actually going to put this inside replicated, uh, actually we're going to be putting it inside starter player scripts. And uh, we can also change it, change the name. As I said before, name and parent are in every object. There it is again. And the class name is local script. Uh, just in case you guys were confused about those earlier, I'm gonna call this sound script. And we can get started. So first, we need the sound, uh, the actual sound. I'm not gonna go over how I get it, but basically, I'm just gonna do local sound equals game colon get service sound service colon wait for child uh, sound or crickets. And there we go, now we have the actual sound. If I, and if I uh, do print sound.name and I play the game, it's going to print crickets. Just like that. Because what it did is we went to the game, we got the service sound service, we got crickets, and then we printed sound, and then we went to properties.name right here and it printed crickets. That's basically how that worked. Um, now let's go over the actual events. So the first thing, I'm actually not going to be typing all of these out, just a few of the important ones. The first one is did loop. So basically, after the, if if looped is true, and the sound reaches the end, um, if looped is true, it will uh, you know fire the did uh, did loop event. So after it reaches the end, it'll fire did loop. The next thing we have is ended. So uh, when the sound ends, it will fire the ended event. Um, next thing is loaded. So you can either check by doing um, if sound dot is loaded equals true, or you can do uh, or you can just wait for sound dot loaded. So Instead of doing sound, instead of doing if sound uh, uh, is loaded equals equals true, you can do. Um, I'm just gonna delete all of that. We can do sound dot loaded colon wait. This will pause the script until the sound is loaded. Uh, the next thing we have is pause. So whenever the sound gets paused by a script or the player, I guess if they're hacking or something, because you can't really do that in a game. Um, it'll fire that event. Yeah, it'll fire paused. The next we have is played, so once the sound is resumed, and, um, you know, yeah, basically once the sound is resumed, it'll fire the played event. Um, actually, uh, Scratch Eye, it's going to fire the played event when it's played originally, but when it's resumed, it will fire the resumed event. There are actually two separate events. Um, the first one is sound.played and sound.resumed. Basically, uh, sound pull or colon play. Right here, this will fire that played event, and the sound colon uh, pause 
will uh, fire the sound up pause event and if you play after pausing it will fire the resumed event. The next thing we have here is stopped so when the sound is fully stopped it will fire the stopped event and um, that's going to be sound.stopped just like that and after that we're going to be going to methods. So uh, for sound uh, there are four methods I'm going to uh, type them all out. The first one is sound colon pause, the next one is sound colon play, the next one is sound colon resume and a uh, sound colon stop so uh, by the way I didn't explain this but sound resume will fire the resumed event and yeah basically all these four uh, methods will come with their uh, respect respectable events so basically when you use these an event will fire so yeah uh, these are self-explanatory I don't really have to explain much sound colon pause and resume go together play and stop go together and yeah the next thing we have is um, uh, not really that much. I'm just, I'm just gonna be doing a, a little bit more stuff. So basically, I'm gonna do a while wait one, uh, while wait one uh, do. So every second, it'll run this loop. It'll run the code in the loop. We're gonna be doing a print sound dot uh, is loaded, and uh, I'm actually be doing while true do, and then wait one after. And it prints false, but then it prints true because originally when the game loaded, the script loaded and the sound was not loaded. So it said that sound is loaded was false. But then after a second, the game was pretty much loaded, and the sound, uh, the sound's property is loaded was set to true, and the sound was uh, well we checked if sound is loaded was true, and then we printed well yeah, we printed the value of the sound is loaded, which is true, and that's why I printed true right here. A little bit complicated. Um, I hope you guys understand. Alright guys, so that's basically all we have for sounds. That's basically how a sound works. You guys learned about the properties, events, and methods of a sound in Roblox Studio. And real quick, I'm going to show you guys if I loop it and I play it, I go into the game. As you can hear, it's looped and playing. Well, you can't really hear the looped part, but I can guarantee that when the sound finishes, it will uh, repeat. But yeah, that's basically how it works. And over here, you can actually see time position. Um, there we go. So every time I open it back up, it updates. But in a script, it, it, w it will be updating live. But yeah, guys, other than that, if this video did help you and you learned about sounds today, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future content. And you'll see more of me on a recommended page. But other than that, guys, it's Rodev. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.